Okay, so in addition to Amitofo, because uh, we need to remember who taught us Amitofo, and today is our dear uh, Shayamuni Buddha's birthday, our teacher, our Bansi. So we'll chant his name three times and then we'll move on to Amitofo. Okay? okay. Namo Shayamuni Buddha. Namo Shayamuni Buddha. Namo Shayamuni Buddha. Namo Amitofo. Namo Amitofo. Namo Amitofo. I will do ten times Amitofo. 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 this uh, session today. Today we're going to continue with uh, Mr. Yu Wu Lang and Kishin Gott. Uh, last week we have started the second round of reading. Um, I admit mean, we have given a bit too much information, but I will keep it um, quite relevant to the point, but, um, but raising a few points of interest. So last week we talked about the uh, how Mr. Yu has encountered the person he has been you know, talking to many times, many years, for seven years, in fact, uh, that's, uh, that person, uh, although he can't see him, but can hear him very clearly, and not just hear him, can see him very clearly, not just see him, can see through him, his thought very clearly. So uh, that person is not other than uh, the kitchen god, in the, now he got an alias in the form of Zhang. So Mr. Zhang has been... Um, uh, appearing as a uh, celestial, some sort of a very um, highly cultivated person in front of him, and he has bring out his weakness, his problems. Most of them is the hypocrisy that he has been putting out. The face he's been putting up is not uh, ref reflecting his actual uh, thoughts and action, and hence his misfortune as a result. Um, now we up to here would probably understand that Mr. Yu has been unaware of his uh, misdeeds. Hence his fate is much more worse than say we can compare to his contemporaries like Liao Fan. Uh, if there's one thing I would like to bring out some new perspective is when I read Liao Fan and he's aware. He just need Yun Gu Chan just sitting there and tell him, what do you think you have done that deserve this fate? He just blab. He just able to say out the whole list of what he had done, so he knows. In the case of Mister Yu, he doesn't know. He really thought genuinely, in all innocence, he is doing good, despite his evil thoughts. And um, this is the difference between him and Delfan, in a sense. And hence, the beginning, the starting point is different. He started very worst with children among seven. Uh, five has gone, and the only precious son that can carry his name is gone as well, uh, been lost in the jungles. And the only uh, surviving uh, descendant is the daughter, and his wife has lost the eye, so no, the elephant doesn't get that bad. That, that reflects the different level of awareness and how important it is. Um, but we are not, story, the story does not end there. That's the most interesting thing. Just because starting point is different, just because a person is not aware, doesn't mean that person is not capable of making a great turn back. And this is even better than Hollywood movies and all that. You keep seeing the cliche with you know, an underdog uh, getting through all that tribulation and suddenly bounce back as a hero of the story. This case, he actually bounced back even better than they'll find, in a sense. And uh, as Brother Kim has mentioned from Master Chinkov's uh, analysis of the stock. This is the whole point of reading this. We want to get something out of it. 
even though he's underwear, he's literally thinking he's doing good, even though he is not. But it, all it takes is a slitter of sincerity in his heart to bring out um, that sense of shame. Like what if I say the sense of shame, sense of courage, uh, sense of um, fear, right, healthy fear, you know, of your consequences to, to push forward the changes you need. And this is exactly what happened to him. He just need a, we Chinese call Yuan. We can call this as, uh, I don't call it conditioned. Um, uh, 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 condition. He just need a right condition to, to, to ignite his um, wisdom. In this case, his wisdom come in the form of repentance. So if we go back to the book, we have read enough of his um, bad deeds, what he actually did. And we have reflect that we are not free from them at all, if not worse. In my case, it would be worse in the form of um, uh, a misconduct, maybe in the mind and all that. Those kind of things are very common and it becomes normalized. So in face of that, uh, we understand that that's why we have so much calamities. That there's a cause behind this because our thought is getting more and more polluted and more and more um, easily um, sway towards extremes. Uh, allowing these unwholesome thoughts to overtake us. So how do we find a way to get back to it? It's a, uh, in, in, in our time and our condition, it's very important in our circumstance. So after that, uh, Mr. Uh, Zhang has continued to talk about what you have done is you try and tell us that you are a good person, but you have no, you have not been a good person. And what you did is not really good deeds. You just do it for the show. Um, so based on this debit and credit, you know, I'm working back. So there's the balance the book kind of mindset. This case, there's also balance the book in your merit. There's accountants like Mr. Zhang that keep tap on your credits and the debit check. And his credit check does not come out clean. He actually owes a lot of punishment because of his misdeeds. So those things apply in our conduct as well, not just in your financials, but in your life conduct, including everything you have now. It's a result of your past. Um, and he has bring out the most important point in your, in even when you're by yourself alone, um, I hadn't seen the, 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 the heavy uh, presence of lust, of greed, of jealousy, of uh, arrogance, of um, agitations, of uh, impatience, uh, and also dwelling on the past, hoping for a future without putting effort, and also remember grudge. So I haven't seen the movie. Uh, a brother came at, but has pointed out this case. He remembers grudge very clearly. Uh, like he knows who is who, who treats him bad and all that. And um, I, 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 um, I think this gives us even better perspective on what kind of state he was in. Remember, everyone has Buddha nature. We came from this point of view. We don't say he's bad and he's always bad. We, we always remember this person was pure once, was maybe innocent once when he's young and stuff, but he grew up into this uh, situation. And apparently from his childhood, he doesn't have a terrible childhood. Like in many movies, we show that this person goes abused and anything. He's very normal and he might be, even be praised as a talent, a prodigy, uh, a person who will be great, but ends up like this. So that shows how deep our um, past deeds have affected us our past karma has affected us. So in this case, it has affected him. We're not going from past life, but just on this life alone, he has uh, accumulated this much misdeeds, um, uh, transgressions, and we can reflect. Um, everything is in your heart, not, no stop. All these uh, misdeeds, uh, all these evil thoughts never stops in your mind. Uh, so this thing uh, has been recorded. So what is actually in your book uh, all these uh, faults and so because on the basis of this fault that you have committed through thought, speech and action, then you have a punishment and this punishment already comes in your life already as you have uh, seen the people around you in the form of that, the payment. So now you have more await for you, not less. You're not getting any more merits, getting more punishment. So that's the fear. And that I think is very effective. 
no matter what era you're in. Like um, we might be living in delusion. Say, uh, uh, you know, I say I'm, I'm using a financial because I'm working back. Um, uh, I'm using credit cards, so I think I'm very uh, rich. So I buy a house, or I just buy like five hundred dollars LV back and one thousand K Lamborghini stuff like that. I thought I'm rich, all right? I'm mortgage and everything, but I never think about how much I contribute. I just spend, spend, spend. I didn't think about I need to accumulate merits. I don't even know if I actually accumulate merits. In the other hand, I thought I did, but it end up incurring more debt to myself. When times come, like Mr. Zhang. Sometimes people will tell you you better start working on your uh, debt. This is what Zhang did to him. But in some case, people were so deluded. Even there are many reminders they didn't see it. One day, all came crashing. They defaulted. They got bankrupt. They lost everything. So the same for him. He's actually at the brink of bankruptcy. In this case, it's worse than the financials. Bankruptcy of his life, basically. Death. And what's worse than death is. What happens to him after death? Uh, like Master Chingo mentioned, death is not the worst part. The worst part is what happens after. A lot of people think there's nothing after death. Good, try. Come back and tell me if it's actually like that. I can be very, very confident this. This whole thing works in cycle. Even the scientists saw principles of conservation of energy. That means energy is conserved, not destroyed. Converted. You are a form of energy. You can convert it into other form. The question is, is your energy better or worse? Is your form of existence get better or worse? If your energy is getting worse and worse, obviously you're going to suffer. So back to the point, his case is getting worse, but there is someone there to tell him, if you change or I bring out what you have, the issues you have. He didn't even say you need to change anything. Just tell him this is what happened. And then let him think he's a smart person. So he responded. So the this show, he responded with shock, with surprise, and then he fell on the ground, just crawl on the ground and cry. Basically, that happens. Very normal. Um, Mister, you must be the god himself. You must be the god of uh, kitchen. So you must know everything I have. Um, please help me. Please save me, sir. Please, please save me. So now it comes back to my starting speech of today. Just uh, sometimes you just need one person to point out the right direction to get rid of all these delusions we are living in and aware to it and then work towards it. In case of Liao Fan is already aware, he just need a bit more push, a, a clearer method. And he has followed Yun Gu in his own capacities. In the case of Yu Jin Yu Gong, you can see that he needs someone to give him a list of what he has done and need to break through his delusion. His delusion is tighter than their funds. So it will still works, you know, just different methods sometimes. So um, this case is Zhang who told him what he has done, not Liao Fan, not himself saying, ah, I did this, I did this. So it's different, uh, but it's trying to achieve the same result. So Mr. Zhang has continued to say, you know what is good and bad, to be honest, deep down inside in that subconscious, you have studied you have learned how to be a morally upright person, a, 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 a decent person. And let's put it in more better terms. Decent person. You learn how to be a decent, well-learned, cultured person. Uh, you also understand the merits of being kind, truly kind. You know that it's nothing more than joy. You know, being good brings you true joy. And I I bring, I repeat my last example of an auntie who's just a normal auntie, uh, a granny, who plants a lot of uh, fruits and vegetables in her gardens. And instead of just um, using it for her own family, she saw a lot of young uh, overseas students or young kids, basically, uh, for her. It's all young kids, 20s, early 10s, and then they're all living in a dorm or something, in, in a share housing. So he, she always bring up food to them. So, and she say, I do it just because I'm very happy. When I see someone likes my, my, my work, uh, my, my fruit and vegetables and they can help them, then I'm, 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 I'm just happy. There's nothing else I'm asking for. I just feel happy. I want to do more. I want to give more. Simple. Best thing is always the simplest. And it doesn't cost a dollar. So it's priceless. So you know this. When you hear someone speak of kindness, 
you are touched. You truly are touched. You want to be good. You've seen someone do good deeds. You, know? you will always encourage them to do it. You will continue to encourage. In, in Buddhism, we call it um, accord with their merits. Praise, uh, praise the merits of others. Uh, even though you didn't do much, you just praise their deeds. If they truly do the good deeds. So these are good. You did that. However, you forgot easily. So these are this this little precious seeds of kindness that you have has been covered up, has been forgotten easily. You didn't know that this part of you is in there. Why is it forgotten easily? Because you don't have a strong foundation on you know believing in the goodness and act on it and actually persist towards it despite the habits. So it's not the case that he does not have it in him at all. I, I, I would wager everyone, including Hitler, has that. But the problem is, what is taken priority? If one person focuses on extremes, in his case is bigotries and all that terrible stuff, part of him, instead of allowing the good part of him to grow stronger, to overpower the dark part, then, yeah. So in his case, he does not allow the good part of him grow. He does not focus on growing his um, good deeds and kindness. But the condition as well. This is all about condition. Uh, so you have no deep root in your kindness, uh, in your goodness. You have no deep confidence in your goodness. You have to grow that, that strength, the inner strength that wants to do good no matter what happens. That means you are not persistent. You don't have that patience. Um, therefore, uh, all the good that you try to do, even though you know it's the right thing, it's just shallow. You do many. There's a saying, wide as a sea, as shallow as a pond. You do a lot, but everything you do is just very shallow. There's no depth in it. There's no insight in it. Everything is just for the face, facade. And that hits at home, to be honest, to myself as well. Like, being shallowed. Like, that's why we need to understand why we're doing this and how do we do it better. And no matter what happens, we keep doing it. So this is why I learned in the first time uh, contact in Buddhism. Someone just pointed out to me, right? Um, Dylan, you are something like Mr. Zhang. And she's also started with the surname Zhang as well. So he said, like, uh, you also uh, do a lot of work uh, on the surface, good deeds, but they are very shallow. They call Biao Ming Gong Fu, they're all on the face. And then that hits me up, like, oh, shit. I mean, sorry, oh, shoot. All I did is just for face. Or maybe it's just appeared to be good. Like, I speak very nicely, eloquently. I it's a, it's a good Like, I, 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 I appear as I'm doing good and all that. But that's, it's not deep enough. Like, it, and when you stay by yourself, you have all these evil thoughts and still have and still not able to overcome it so that's that's the part so what afflicts him actually afflicts myself and i think many people as well um so are there anything you did come out from you know are there anything you did has substance do you have substance in everything you do anything anything at all no um you say think of this in the tone of a uh a kind doctor trying to get the patient out of that delusion or a kind father or mother trying to wake his son daughter up from the nightmare or self-deluding uh, life or someone who stopped someone uh, from suicide trying to wake him up like you know don't give up on yourself to me so think of this the tone in that way okay so all you say or everything you thought everything you say has evil intention in there that means incorrect intentions, in, uh, improper intentions. Um, it, it comes out very frequently, tang entangling uh, your, 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 your thoughts, your speech, your action, everything, your whole being is what's entangled by these unwholesome thoughts. Um, so um, how can you blame the heavens? How can you blame the people who just merely execute according to the law of cause and effect? You can't blame them. They are police. They only catch you if you have done wrong things. Talking about the 
the t uh, causing effects. So it's just like you're planting all these thorns, pricklings, but expecting it to grow into like what cucumber, cabbages, sweet orchards of, um, you know, orchards of uh, apples. No, the cause is not right. Um, so you, you can't expect to uh, ex uh, receive any rise out of uh, 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 a plantation of thorns. Um, so from now on, so he gives him a prescription basically. So this is your problem. Now his prescription is over here. As long as there is this last greed, fakeness, kachi. Um, in a kachi in Chinese, many ways. Okay. First thing is just very normal, like being polite, being courteous. That's fine. In this case, kachi means uh, the tone is very fake. It's just not sincere. Insincerity, yes. So as long as you last have greed, insincerity, um, you don't mean what you say, basically. Um, the the wandering thoughts, all this rubbish, all these wandering thoughts. I think rubbish is a better word. All this rubbish in your mind. Uh, you need to have, this is what I find, say courage. You need to have that, you know, pull it, or that, that oomph. You need to you, you gather all your energy, sweep it all away. That means put it aside. Even though you can't sever it, sweep it on one side. Okay? Clean it up, box it up, box it one side. Okay. I'm not talking about arahat level. It's not possible for normal people. Most people just have all this coming up. They can't stop it. So what you can do, put it aside, leave it there, let it rot, box it up, put put a cover on top, and leave only one thought in that mental space. Uh, what is that one thought in mental space? That's what the I uh, have the um, the ten meritorious deeds. Uh, Buddha say the ten meritorious deeds for Sosu Sanye Um Whatever you do, whatever you say, always focus on good deeds, goodness, kindness. So, in this case, clean this rubbish aside. Only leave one pure thought in the middle. Uh, if you can act on this good. Feed, Good thoughts one at a time guys not too much um, master wooding also mentioned if you can do one thing well and deep one good things well then do it until the very end sorry i paraphrase it she said you know uh, you can't do everything at once you're not there we're not there yet. but the point is if you can do one thing well and this is a good thing then do it very well have substance in it basically even Find a point you can go in and do it. Okay, that's what it means by chanting Amitov. It has a lot of meaning in there. It's not a you know, different scenario. Some people they they have the merits of just chanting. For us, we have to work and all that. You can use that Amitov as a representation of good that you did. Amitov has infinite meanings. So this is one of the meanings of Amitov. A lot in finite guys. There's no way you can define Amitofo in one words. It's represented by all the goods. So this is one of the the case. You focus on the goods. If you have ability to do good, do it. And when you do it, seek no return. Like doesn't doesn't matter if it comes out or not come out. Just put it aside. I'm just doing it because I'm doing it. Just like the auntie plant all the trees and all the stuff. She doesn't even need to read this. She already knew that. You can see her root is deep. See, do not look down on anyone. These people are like well cultivated. They don't need to appear as a long beard and white hair and all that. This is not just, well, I wouldn't say cliche. This is like some people's, because you know, it, people, the, the celestials appear according to the needs of the people. People who have that stereotypes, then they follow the stereotype. But in her case, she, she's a normal um, stay at home auntie who has happened to love gardening and she just loves to share with people around her. There we go. Already part performing a Bodhisattva path. So not asking any return, not asking any fame, no matter how big, how small, cleaning up the house or big stuff like, you know, actually helping them through the emergencies uh, in any form. Do it earnestly. Just do what you can, trying to get them to the completion, if you can, as much as you can. 
be patient when you uh, perform this task. If you can't uh, afford to do it anymore or outside your capability, your authority or something like that, or something you should not, like you just can't do it in your own current uh, self, uh, you must also um, try other ways to complete it. Find someone who can. So these are the pressures. Um, it boils down to this one, to be honest. That's it. Bad things are very complicated. Crap, to be honest. I apologize for my root, but it's all crappy. It's, I'm going to use S with as well. It's something like that. It's a lot of these things come together and complicates and people guessing one another and stuff. But one good thing is one. That's it. Pure heart. Do it. And when you do it, obviously, wisdom, you need wisdom. Right? Wisdom is built upon uh, with time. You know when to do, what not to do. But your mind remains pure. That wisdom comes out naturally. You don't think, you don't process it. Obviously, we can't do it. But what I'm saying is there's only one good, one good thing can perf uh, 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 form in any, 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 uh, any, any, any way, in any form. But there's only one pure intention. That's it. But the rest, all this, you know, whispers at your side, just like the God, kitchen God say, sweep it one side. Isn't that the same as we did as a pure and practitioners? I think if we give this context to the pure and practitioners, I'm pretty sure they chant Amitabha for even better. This is a context. There's one reason why Master Yin Guang promotes this book. He's a patriot of Pure Land, guys, and he's not promoting it directly into the, 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 the Pure Land Sutra. He promotes these books because this is the land that we need. Otherwise, it's shallow. Just like him, we, we thought we chant Amitabha for being kind and good, but when we're not chanting Amitabha for, more than chanting Amitabha for, and even when we're chanting Amitabha for, we still have a lot of these thoughts. So that's why we, we, we need to understand that chanting Amitabha for and being good, doing all the thousands of good deeds are one. And if you are in that position to do it, you need to do it. That's your condition. Master Ching Kong say, if condition arise, you not do it, then you're wasting your time to accumulate merits. And Buddha has already said, you cannot have less merits, uh, less fortunes, um, and less uh, good seeds to go to Pyongyang. Because our Sangyang for the Yin Earth doesn't be cool. These are important. So, so over here, we learn, no matter where you are, what you're doing, if you continue in these habits, uh, definitely you will get to where you are. Be patient, be earnest, doesn't matter the case is big or small, who's who, what's what, uh, this thing can come later. As long as you think this is a good thing and this must be carried out because it truly does benefit people. Then you see the know-how, who's the right person to ask and all that. Those are all pro mechanicals. Those comes after. Before that is the one thought. So what we want to bring home is this one. Leave only one in your mental space. Clean up the rest and practice on that. In our case, we can use Amitofo. If we still don't understand the meaning of Amitofo, then we start from here. And then when we eventually do it, you chant back Amitofo, the energy is different. Trust me. The, so number one is be patient. Number two is be persistent. Patience, persistence. Do not be slack. Do not be self deceiting So persist, persist, persist. You will un you will reap the rewards. You will reap the results. You have been very kind and you have been very sincere to me. When you when you pray to me, you've been very sincere. And because your sincerity, because you're really sincere and now you've been sincere to me when you talk to me, and so I need to repay that. See, it's very fair, guys. Heaven is fair. Eh? No debt in heaven. Debt is debt. Credit is credit. You cannot mix them up. Bad deeds will be need to repay with full. Good deeds will also be repaid in full. And they are separated. Don't use human understanding, say they can be offset. No offset, guys. No offset accounts. What they do is, which one is more powerful? If the good deeds is more powerful, then you go to the, to your, your existence get better. Doesn't have to wait next life, guys. Liao Fan, Mr. Yu, he's already exchanging. He's more powerful with good deeds. But the bad deeds does not disappear, it just weakens. Same goes for us. Um, going to Pure Land is a next step. But before we go into Pure Land, have we shown any sign of improving? 
over here. This is a preview of whether you can go to PLA or not. If our life is getting, um, I'm not talking about circumstance. Circumstance can be bad sometimes. Um, like Miss um, Madam, sorry, I forgot. There is a Dongbei, there's a, uh, there's a Bodhisattva, uh, Qing Kong, uh, Liu Suyin, yes, uh, Madam Liu. She has a bad condition. She has a disease that will take her life away. I think blood related disease. And her sister, Liu Su Qing, Ju Su, uh, Madam Liu uh, Su, oh, Su Qing, um, she has a unstable relationship. Uh, the, 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 she's been very kind, but her husband is um, not as kind. Uh, the relationship is not good, basically. It's not faithful or something. I don't know. It's just not a very good condition, to be honest. But that push her to prove that Pure Lane is real, something like that. Their determination is strong. Their root is real. And, and they did that at the age of um, 15 onwards, I think, after they become um, mothers. So so nothing is too late. It's the condition. Just like Zhang um, is a condition for Mr. Yu to be kind. Just like Master Yun Gu is the condition for um, Mr. Liao Fan to change his life. Um, Madam uh, Liu, the sisters, they have their own condition. One is the her husband, one is her, uh, her deceased. And also we have, um, I'm bringing the real life example to strengthen this case. That we also have, um, there's also a, a, a CEO in China, I forgot his name. Uh, he, he always say disagree, disagree, and then the whole family hide the fish in the fridge because he want to be a vegetarian and you know, he followed Master Qing Kong, but then he realized uh, he's too strict and not being Bodhisattva enough. So he changed his ways. Also, he also have a lot of problem with business and all that. This is a businessman, a CEO of his company, uh, own his company, basically. Uh, and he changed his life after all that you know, pub nightlife and stuff. He, he has reformed. So all these people have their own ignition. Like, yeah. And then how fast, how slow depends on themselves. Liao Fan is long. He's aware, but he's working on it one by one, step by step. And then ticking boxes. It, not, it might not work for everyone. It doesn't work for me, guys. I don't tick boxes. But I, I get it from watching other people doing it and say, this is a real person who has transformed. And then that ignites me, want, want to move next level. I, I put myself in the middle frame. So different for you, uh, and the ends are different for others. So find it, but get inspired from this. So, but the principle never change. Sweep aside all the rubbish, leave only one thing behind, which is your purest, kindest thought. That's the most innocent, the most, um, we call it naive, but it's it's the purest, most naive, uh, most pure form of yourself, the, the, the intention. And it's usually helping, uh, the wisdom can come, don't worry, it will come. That's your, that's your nature. And perform it without slack, without self deceiving. Easy to say, guys. Easy to say. Uh, yeah. Like, how slack? How, how, what does slack and rest mean? You know, those are very minute details, technical details we need to learn. Buddha already mentioned the string too tight, snap. String too loose, no music. He's, talk, he's pointing out at the music and immediately bring out an example. Um, there's a person, who, a monk, who was being very lazy. And then Buddha say, look at the string. That string, if it's too loose, then it's not working. Lose the purpose. That means just like you, oh, they were away and then they preset, held the preset properly. And there's another one too intense, non-stop, trying to be, you know, everything on the point. But we all understand that it's too intense and you snap eventually. It, it, all the progress you made revert back. So Buddha point to him and say, look at the string as well. If it's too tight, what happened? You will snap. Oh, Buddha. That's right. You will get snapped. So he's like, oh, yes. So I need to relax a bit. In our case, it's coffee. I don't know what in any case. Maybe, you know, calm down, sweep the floor a bit. So the point is moderation, middle path. In this case, slacking. Because we are slacking. So they tell us don't slack. Remember that, okay. Self-deceiving, yes. He's been self-deceiving for 47 years. 
And that they pointed out to him, he has awakened to all of it. So I think this word is very strong. For us, yes, we're aware. But how much to be aware? And, 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 and how, how do we get there? We need to find our way, our formula. We might take 10 years, you know, different background, different condition, different results. Um, I mean, different uh, level they will achieve, but we still reach there. Don't underestimate where you are or how, how you get there, just because you might not comparable to someone like Mr. Yu, who has huge transformation. Remember, he has gone through a lot of tribulations before. For your case, we just need to get there, that level awakening to be able to, you know, upgrade to your land, which is another level. You have your own level. You have your own capability. Bring up to your own level and your own capability. You understand that. You understand how much more you need to push to get there. Um, I understand that, how much more I need to go further. But I don't, I don't want to snap. I don't want to reverse everything. So I need to take my time. So aware of your weakness, aware of that, be, be strict, but yet able to give yourself a bit of space to catch up. And not long, in future, you will get results. So you've been very kind to me. You've been very sincere to me. So I must repay you with this little words, of, uh, little advice. Uh, I hope this is also the reply from the heavens to all these seven years of your seekings. Now, I hope you can make use of it. Is there all adults? You know, I give you all you need. It's up to you. Up to you. After you finish. Uh, he just go into Mr. Yu's room and then Mr. Yu, you know, followed. But when he um, trying to look at the kitchen, the stove, he walked towards the stove, stove god. Kitchen god, actually it's stove god, Zhao, Zhao is stove in, in, in Chinese. Um, Zhao Lu. So he just walked towards the stove and disappeared. Mr. Yu is like, oh, he's gone. So he understand that he is the auditors of the heaven. Uh, yeah, thank you by burning incense and all this. Um, you know, he he he, he's awake, born again, in a sense, in the truest sense. You know, not the cliche. He is born again. He born again because he's aware of what he did and what he needs to do in relation to that. Because what he did caused what he has facing now. So what he needs to do in order to um, amend his past errors, we call it repentance. Repentance comes with action, not just talk. So he actually repent and swore that he would change everything he did in the past to the good one, do all the good deeds. Hence, to commemorate the new form of Mr. Yu, he changed his name uh, into, he didn't say his past name, I think, uh, his title into Pure Heart, Mr. Yu Pure Heart, Mr. Yu of the Pure Heart, Yu Ji Yi. So I want to be a cultivator of Pure Heart and swore that he would get rid of all that rubbish, wandering thoughts. When he started, that initial phase, we always heard that starting is always the hardest. Once you get onto the track, everything just feels like highway. So it's like trying to get out from your house to the highway. And that part has a lot of nooks and crannies, traffic lights stopping you, some intersection and everything. You're trying to get to that ramp, but so many things regress to me. You miss the ramp. You have to go back around about. Again, this is what happened to me. That's why it's so clear. And, and you're trying to get yourself on the highway. And that part is always the part that drives you off. And most people drop off because of that. Once you reach that initial level up to the track, it becomes part of your life, habits and everything. Then is highway. Everyone can do that. But the thing is patience, persistence. And patience and persistence comes with experience and every day. What do you want to do? Um, and, and, and obviously the Buddha's analogy, snap or loose, that balance, the fine balance we need to achieve. We need to understand that ourselves. Like my habits as well, right? I like this so much. So too much time to spend on this game. And so how much I cut it off to do that? And how motivated I am to get out of it. So it's my problem, guys. But what I'm saying is just an example 
to get out of this beginner phase. Some people stuck 10 years, 20 years in that because we always backwards, forward, backwards, forward, backwards. So he has the same problem. He has so much wandering thoughts. Uh, and among the wandering thoughts, the worst case is doubt, uh, skepticals, doubts and skepticals. We think is a good thing right now is the modern value say being skeptical of everything because everything's not what you see. Buddha didn't say you blindly believe in everything. But when there is a sage teachings, there's a reason why it was passed down a thousand years. These people have seen it all. And they don't go through it by doubting. Yes, they know something's wrong, the delusions of the people, the, the ideologies and all that. But he didn't become one of those cynical people shut in and all that. He actually has wisdom to break through the delusion, bring out the reality. What's the reality? We call emptiness. And that emptiness is not void. It's everything, every phenomena arises like a, like a wave and then none of them is permanent. They are all bubbles, chains, and each chain is one complete existence. And, and this chain together by delusions. So there's no beginning on this whole thing. Hence, there's no ending. There you go. No life means no death. If you have birth, you must have death. If there's no birth, there's no death. So those are deep metaphorical stuff, but we should not categorize it that. It happens right now. We're just not aware of it. Reality, the best form of reality is there in front of you. It's just how aware of it. So quick, right? One, one snap of finger, Master Shin Kong say, has how many, we call computer frames per second, right? So in our current reality, how many frames per second passed? Each second, how many pictures has passed? This is how TV works, right? I think we are all savvy enough in this modern age to understand how TV works, a basic form. One frame, 24. That's the earliest form of technology. 24 pictures passed in one second in front of this mirror, uh, computer, we call it monitor. That's TV, that's movement. So right now you look at Dylan, I'm looking at Auntie Yenzi. I'm looking at you in, in front of uh, everywhere you watch. You're moving. How many frames is that? How many pictures are that? Think of it. So back to here. I'm not going too deep, but this is part of it. This is how deep it goes, guys. So this is what Buddha sees. His depth. His depth. He saw these realities. There's nothing is, uh, nothing is um, superstitious about that. It's like scientists, but deepest level. Scientists of his heart. He seen through everything he is. And hence, he can see his relation to others. And, and this doubt stops that progress. It stops you from going there. Because doubt is also a form of affliction. And especially as pure and practitioner, doubt is the worst enemy, worse than greed, hatred, ignorance, worse than all the Mr. Yu's problems. Because our, our case is we need to, we have this historical Buddha, where we read the Shayamini Buddha, that's the whole point of understanding Buddhism. And then we have Amitabha Buddha. He even has his own history through the mouth of Shayamini Buddha. We are um, honored to hear how he become Amitabha. These are to bring up the confidence. And chanting is just a vessel, just a way to, to, to bring up that confidence and vow. If no confidence, no vow, you're going nowhere. Not just pure land. Pure land is emphasizing on confidence and vow. My point of bringing it up, if people are not uh, ready to go to pure land yet, even in daily life, people who achieve top level in their life, in this human life, I'm not talking about arahats, normal people, owns the company, get at the top of their games. They have confidence. That level of confidence is strong. They're not doubtful, they're not skeptical, they're not like, uh, this is, uh, they're not hiding in their tin for head. They see a problem, they're aware of the problem, otherwise they wouldn't be there. Otherwise they, they run. But they see opportunities in the problem. They see what the other side of the problem, they, they, they transform it. This is what Buddha did in the higher level. As well, he can transform his reality. We, why do I bring all this level? Because we not experiencing it doesn't mean we cannot. It might not be happening now or without the help of Amitabha. The reason Amitabha can even help you to reach that level is because you already are that level. We're just deluded. We are not. 
we're just not aware of it. And once we're truly aware of it, the magic is just wake up to it. And it takes time. For this case, we need to go back to the root, the foundations. Foundations of goodness and all that is to be kind. Obviously, Mr. Yu, as a Chinese traditional Chinese, he already even have the foundation of the foundation. Gen zhi gen, be the piety and all that. That thing is taken for granted in the ancient Chinese society. They're very rare there were cases be people who not. In our case, we need to go even more basic than this. This is already there. We, are, we need to focus on our roots. Whole point of, um, I think Auntie Yen's done the ebook, pointing out the most important part. And I agree that the most important part is the roots. Without that roots, you can't grow that confidence, that level of energy, reservoir. You need to get up, out. No one wants to stay stagnant. Buddha, Buddhism doesn't tell you to stay stagnant. The whole point of Buddhism is to awaken. What's the point of awaken? Anywhere, any place you go without restriction, you're liberated. Restriction from who? Your own delusions. Hmm. So now it's 11.15, uh, another 15 minutes. I'm going back to the point is um, he has started difficult because his thought never stops. Why is it difficult? His thought never stops. Always coming. And we all the same. What kind of thoughts that is worse to him? Otherwise, he wouldn't point it out. If it's not doubt, then it's slack. So number two is slack. Sloth. Even in Christian tale, they have seven deadly sins, isn't it? But this time, they make it even simpler. Two of them, doubt, sloth, or slack. Laziness. Oh, good. This too happens. So, sorry, I haven't, I haven't round up my point on doubt. The point of us, sometimes we can't see the reality because we are not there yet. So we need to believe in someone who has seen it and to follow their prescription. Eventually we reach a level where we can see ourselves. That's the point of faith. We're not talking about blind faith. We're talking about educated, understandable faith. Some people who are very Good. I need to emphasize on this. I don't mind spending another week. This is this is the point of us sitting here. If there is no confidence in this teaching, even a slither of it, then we can't get to where we are. Not even your own career, to be honest. There's no slither of confidence in yourself. Uh, and this confidence means you understand your weakness, your strength. You understand what you need. You need help. What kind of help you need. And understand that what you can do, what you can grow out of it. Um, same goes in, in Buddhism practice, obviously it's otherworldly. It's also the same. You understand that your weakness, your problems and what you need to reform and how much you can do to reform. What's the obstacles? Those things are the constitution of your confidence. So you need to know yourself in order to have confidence. Otherwise, there's no confidence. It's just blind. In this case, we might not know what happens at the higher level. We're confident in this Buddha who has that higher level. Just like we have confidence in specialists and doctors who can do their best because of their professional training to treat our, our disease and ailments. We're confident in Buddha. Same thing. It's not superstitious at all. It's not just burning incense and it will happen. They are not bribable. They don't need to be bribed. They have everything. Why do they need your money or your suckling pig burning that? It's also that is superstitious. Unfortunately, we can't just cut it off because habits we can't even cut off our own habits, guys. Collective habits, how can you do it? That's why my point is, believing in them is like believing in a specialist who do their job. Eye specialists who do their job, their best, to give you the best possible treatment. If we even lost that sense of confidence in the society, this society would fall apart. Same goes to this. Even if we even lost the sense of confidence in the teachings of the sages, who has already proven to you in history, they have to do it. We can dismiss it as some mythical elements just because we didn't see it just like the ends you tell them there is a space out there what would they say you are talking crap or you're talking about some la la land you should wake up continue work for your queen in that nest that's your reality we are like the end guys how small are we you don't even i don't even need to bring any more example the, look at the astrologies uh look at the 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 chart, how small our sun is compared, let alone our earth. We are an ant. So what we do is we understand there is a higher level existence. 
the question is how to know this person is real or fake and i'll be honest pure um, sincerity purity if you have that part in your you will be able to discern you just feel for something's wrong with this person but you just feel that all that required because there's a lot of like twisted teachings right right now they use the name of buddhism christianity or islam that's even more obvious to do evils in the name of those sages why because lack of wisdom why lack of wisdom because we're not sincere we're not pure we're not um aware not reflecting if you understand yourself you will be able to understand others out of war guys what war well i'm not talking about clashing war of mind like understand yourself then you can see this person trying to hook you based on your greed ignorance because i have greed over money that you say if you pray to me i will give you a lot of money you get a lot of there you go they hook based on your weakness humanity's weakness in case of extremism terrorism they hook based on your ignorance based on your um, devotion they twisted your devotion into something weaponize it devotion is good no devotion there's no family there's no children there's no trust in society but devotion to a fanatical level you burn people on the stake that's what happened in europe or you bomb a a, a nation or a, a a street side or you invade some other countries on the pretense of securities devotions wrong put devotion correct devotions you become sage buddha angel of the god something like that those are two double h sort nothing is bad energy is not bad the thing is how the energy is being used same goes for our faith our devotion so don't dismiss it with one word superstition there's so many depth in this it's so crucial to humanities from there we can build up all the other stuff so okay confidence number one fact yes that one that one is a hard topic to tackle i have eight nine more minutes slackish so you need to know yourself to know, to know others so you know how you slack right i'll give you an example how i slack and this does not happen consciously so i've been very plan i've been very um honest to myself sometimes i say i want to do this i want to do this you know like i want to complete cook my food get ready for my next week um go out pick up shoppings lists and everything wake up early so i did the wake up early i did the breakfast i did the shopping and then come back because i bought a a, a a gaming gaming controller and i was like i want to try it out when i try it out i want to try it on a game i want to try it on a game and then i play 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 because i like anime I, sp I play a lot of game and then once i finish playing the game i was like well, why not watch some movies and i watch some movies there we go 12 hours later 12 hours guys i just heat up the food eat and continue that's how easy it is for us to fall into our indulgence slackishness is one of them awareness is like life and death guys like if you're aware put a break on that and force yourself to do something you need to do then i don't have that much work to do today so now i have to do double the work today uh so this is also a form of preventing myself from slacking thank you Auntie. we have this every week with youth group with auntie yenzi why because we want to stop slacking you know why master ching kong speak for 60 years non 60 years is it non-stop you know why he did that because he know he was slack yes it's how simple it is he just want to stop slacking and obviously stop this seeds of doubts coming up without the sutra immersion every hour every day four hours back then when he was young eight hours guys eight hours of sutra talking i don't know how he do that but i can say devotion if you use correct eight hours guys devotion say on some business manager or some people want to better their team better their clients brings up even better business model out of it. it it benefits their staff it benefits their client so this is the correct devotion using the right way uh you might have greed and all that but you box it up in the in the in the, in the package and put your best effort devote into something uh, that is constructive this needs wisdom wisdom becomes some education educate us how to channel our thoughts and energy to the right direction and this is something lacking nowadays 
even in the religious groups. Becomes following the script rather than understand the script and apply it properly. So back to the point. This is also a script. Apply it properly and apply it towards your condition. If you want to prescribe it to someone else, or I won't say prescribe, you want to recommend, recommend it according to the condition. Same thing. So I would like to wrap up. Um, Doubt, number one, obstacle, slackishness, because it, without effort, you cannot get to where you are. There's a hard requirements. Doubt is your, your, your confidence and, and effort in, in against the slackishness gives you that that the real confidence that you have confidence you need to prove it how do you prove it your own hands two hands work on it work on it like work on it you find out what's the problem then you find out what you can do right you find out how big how small you are and you then you can see where you're going wrong. so no matter where i am i always tell them if you know your bottom line congratulations you're on the upward path if you don't know where you are you'd have you don't feel the ground Sorry, mate, you still need to work harder because you don't know when you will fall. The higher you get, the higher you fall. If you know what, that's your firm ground you can stand on and you will nap, not fall any further because you know you won't, no matter what happened. And that can only be done through actually experiencing it. Then you will you will only work harder to go up. So Mr. Yu has done his job. He has gone to, he has gone to the ground, guys. Okay. And he admit he's been slacking and he's been floating. He can't find his ground uh, in the beginning. He doesn't find how to build this new life of him. Um, and whole soul, what he did, ask someone who knows Guan Yin Pusa. Uh, he prayed to the Guan Yin and then he prayed in a very sincere way. He, I mean, I'm not condoning this, but he keep you know, prostrating and prostrate involves your not, uh, forehead to the ground until he bled. His forehead comes up bruised. He'd been prostrating in front of the Bodhisattva Guan Yin until his bruise came up on his forehead. And vow, I vow that I will purify my thoughts forever. I will always remain, uh, uh, I will always keep pure minds, uh, kind minds in my thoughts. That's it. No, nothing else. Because he's, yeah, that's his name. He put a title to him. That's his goal. And because with this daily practice, daily um, self-talk, talking to Guan Yin is actually self-talk in a sense. Uh, he grows his energy. He do it. Before that, he do it, but he doesn't know what he's doing. And then he get get a hang of it. And then he's like, that's not enough. I need to I need to refresh again. We commit his devotion. And he get better, and he has reached a level where he can see that he's slacking off. Like I did yesterday, that little, little slacking off, but I can't stop it. He can. It's like, oh no! He said, "I vow that my mind will be pure forever, and I vow that my strength of kindness will be um, strong. I will, I will be persistent in doing good, being good, thinking good. And if I have a slight thought of slack in this endeavor." In this goal, I will fall into hell. Very strong words. Every morning. So how do we do that? Remind this is a mental mental pump. Takes more than physical. Physical is just stupid. Mental. So he prayed to the compassion, the great compassionate uh, Avalokitesvara, the Guan Yin, the great compassionate Guan Yin, uh, one hundred times every day to pray that he can achieve this. So he's been doing that every day. So we should do that. Should I may talk about that. And so from now on, from then, every word he say, every thought he think, just like someone watching him. Basically, someone's like standing next to him. So he's living like that. Um, and he, he do not dare to slack off. He do not dare to allow himself to be reckless in his action, even in alone. Every time there is a people to say, to help, maybe be that serious, help, to help with, um, or things that he can benefit, 
people, you know, he can things that he has that can benefit others. Uh, doesn't matter how big, how trivial, how serious, how trivial things is, uh, or how busy, how free he is. Uh, whether people know or not know uh, about this, okay, this this thing, he um do not stop. He always finds a slot to do this. That's that's the representation of diligence. Um, and he, he, he loves it. He loves it. The more we do, the more better. That's how he improves his energy level. Um, just the more he gives, the more he gets. And the more he gets, the more he gives. He gets bigger and bigger and bigger. He gets more and more wanting to do that. Um, and doesn't matter how difficult things are, he always find a way around to do it until he made this request complete, until he achieved as much as he could in this endeavor. So this is how serious he is. Obviously, he don't just run to you and say, do you need help or anything? It's too desperate. He um, he followed the accord to the conditions. See, this is also the wisdom part. You 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 find daily life, there's you know household you need to clean and all that. Those are part of the good things. Small, trivial, but important. Build up the character. Outside in work, there are cases where people need help. You have been busy with your work. But you understand this person needs help, doesn't matter. Set it aside. Give them a bit of space. If you can't get away after the after your work, find a place, find a time to help them. Doesn't matter. Help them. Doesn't matter how busy you are, help them. It doesn't matter how much you can help, even refer them to someone else that can help them better in their job. If that's my condition, then it's considered good things. So this liberates your whole experience. You can do it anytime, anywhere, with anyone. Um, and this improves your energy because you have confidence. It's just come naturally. You know the life is not as close up as your mind thought to be. Like I said, it's delusion. The actual thing is everyone's connected very well. Unique, but connected. So I'll stop here. Um, I'll actually stop the whole thing. Um, and and if he do it in a way is accord to the flow. He don't just um, being a try hard. That's a different thing. It's he didn't force it on others. That would be wrong. That would be wrong devotion. Um, and he he um, he also do a lot of things beneath the sight of others. So good things. He accumulate hidden virtues. He don't just go out and say I did this. He just do it. When whether people are looking or not, I'm doing it. That's the hidden virtues. You do it because it's right. That's it. And then he follow the five relationships set by Confucius. It's not a set of rules, it's an observation, guys. We must understand that you get more rigid towards the ending part of uh, Imperial China. It's not supposed to be that rigid. It's supposed to be flexible because father loves their son, son loves their father. Same goes for parents and children. Those are natural. And subordinates, you, you, you need to have a sense of respect to your boss in order for your boss to be able to command the job properly. And the boss needs to understand the needs and cares for the subordinates. Otherwise, the team will not work. They will rise up and they will leave or they will rebel. This is just natural. If you want your company to run smoothly, you've got to be a human. And at the same time, you've got to be understanding how the, the, the hierarchy, the way things work. Even there's no hierarchy. Like I said, there's no hierarchy. There's also a nice semblance of um, priori, uh, first among equals. I'm using a Roman word now. Uh, someone who's very good, you need to bring him out in front and then you need to let them lead the thing, even though we call it equals. Would I even say that? Sorry, I, I dread too much. He said that he talked to those, you know, the caste system back in India is serious. Buddha time, they already been 10,000 years. It's no point trying to reform everything, but there's some people who can open mind and listen. He talks to them. You know how Brahmin becomes Brahmin, the highest of the caste? Uh, you know how this uh, his his own caste is number two, the kings and the royals. You know how royals becomes a royal caste, because back then in the beginning of human civilization, these smart people, these morally virtuous people, they really think they are good people. They are smart. They are capable. They were elected by the people to be serving the communities because he has the best solution and wisdom to serve the public. So he is elected. He's not some 
some heavenly divine being drop down on earth and then everyone pray to him. Those are later. This is the beginning, guys. This is how they was even in Buddha Sangha. You know how they select? They select one of the elders who are actually well. What's supposed to happen is they select the most capable one, the the enlightened one. Doesn't matter their age. You can be eight years old. If you're enlightened, you are the leader of the sangha. Everyone treats you like Buddha. There's no difference. It just looks same thing. So that, that's what's supposed to happen. So back to the point. He followed this set of rules. It makes sense now. If we didn't say it clearly, people would think this is one of those old rules. No, it's human. It's how, it's how human society works. If you want to work well, this is how it always happens. The rule that must follow. The foundation. And then be diligent in learning. Be, um, humi uh, be, be humble. Be patient. Able to withstand humiliation. Uh, and always re listen to the cause and effect teaching. Always remind yourself uh, what I did. Uh, cause and effect. It might be a bit of a headache in the beginning because there's a lot of cases, but you need to understand the principle. You reap what you sow, and there are time dilation. That means there are time difference. You might do good now, but the bad you did in the past caught up. The past caught up with you. You have to pay it. So you may appear as a good, maybe actually genuinely good, but the circumstance that befalls you might not be necessarily happen. Uh, it's mostly because of the past that you did, and a lot of them are past life. As a human, like I say, an ant who cannot see everything, we thought, oh no, yeah, he's a good guy, look at where he's going. There's a lot of this saying. No. Past, present, future. Einstein say that, all right? Because we all trust in science, right? Past, present, future, all right? They are all, they're not straight arrows. We construct it into straight arrows. Our mind is very rigid, but the actual space and time is not straight. I don't know how to say it. I'm not there yet, but what I'm saying is it's not like that. It's, it's the data. It can be molded. Hence, do you understand why Buddha can do all these things? It's not magical. It's science, high level science that we don't understand. So Buddhism is neither a philosophy, it's neither a science, it's neither a religion, but it's all of them as well. It cannot be defined by this. So Master Ching Kong using that. Why not education? Because it educates you about the lack of these disciplines and also the higher level of these disciplines. It also educates you about yourself in relation to your universe, which is your life, living environment. Uh, this are wrap up in Chinese easily. Everyone's like, oh yeah, they, they chant it like mantra. But if you think about it, it's actually very profound. Uh, so we need to, um, if we think, if we're a thinker, then we use this method to increase our confidence. If you're not a thinker, like you're privileged, like Venerable High Sien, just chant up tofu. We have to go through this. I have to, I'm a thinker. That means my wandering thought is a uh, long way for me. You know, most of us, I think. So back to the point, uh, long path doesn't mean no path, right? A path to go better than no path to go. Always think about that. The worst case scenario is we're lost forever. Um, so we met someone who teaches. He every time he met someone to teach, he always listened. Oh no, he he when he meets someone who he can you know who can accept his teaching, cause and effect, he always teach them. He always tell them, hey, I'll teach them, share. Like this is like like what we do now, we share. Uh, you can uh, take it, so I'll share it with you. You can't take it, I'll share as much as you can take it. Voila. Um, every month, every day, he calculate what he did, just like the ticking boxes. Uh, and, and, and just to give yourself your perspective, how much you did. And he used um, uh, the, the kitchen god, the stove god, as the target of report. He report to him like his boss. Um, and then he say, uh, the more he do and until he reaches a certain maturity in his act of kindness, that means he gets more and more skillful. Uh, Buddhism there is a use skillful, In English, there's also a lot of translation, wholesome, skillfulness. In Buddhism, you also emphasize a lot on skillfulness because this thing comes with time and you get better and better. Uh, better means you get more natural. You don't even have to think about it. So this is what he did. He, he, he get better. Yes, even more insight. So what level of skillfulness he has achieved? 
I think I'd like to wrap this up with this. This is very encouraging. From where he was, not aware at all what he did. Let's think about it. Not aware at all, being superficial, uh, grudge, all of the grudge. And according to, I think, Brother Kim already told us that he gone through this for three years after the 47. So that's 50, right? After Mr. Zhang has advised him. Three years. He has reached this level. What level? When he thought his thought moves. Or if you don't move, you about it, Buddha. But his thoughts still move. But when he moves, everything is good. If he fulfills his promise. Only kind deeds allowed in his door, in his mental palace. Only good thoughts arise. Seriously, nothing bad. So he has reached that level. When he stopped thinking, so when, when the brain waves stop acting uh, in, in, a, in a stable mode, um, there's nothing there. It's clean. Don't misunderstood this as stupid, guys. It's not. People who bite so anything, they, are, they call it blank, but they're more like clouded in darkness. You don't understand. This one is clear. It's like a pure crystal water, a, 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 a beautiful pond. Um, and you see everything clearly. You see the water, you see the screen. It's not a piece of pitch black. It's, it's a very clear scenery, but peaceful and serene. That's his level. All right. And that has been three years. He's been doing that for three years uh, to achieve this level. So I would like to stop here um, because I, I stay a long, uh, I overdue 10 minutes on the um, dog part. I would emphasize this in next week's youth class. Uh, some This is a big problem we have. Um, the what works in scientific discipline does not work in stage teaching. And I would like to extend further what Master Ching Fong has proposed. The crisis of confidence is what happening in this era. All this disease digest through is secondary to this. Without confidence, everyone lost that sense of trust. I'm working in bank. You know how much we rely on trust. 110%. Literally, all these documents and everything, they can only do so much. If there's no trust between clients and banks in the institution, things fall apart. Doesn't matter what system you're in, what sort of governance, without trust, without confidence, the society will fall into literally ending age. We have 9,000 years to go, we're not going to do that. Okay. Um, Sorry for the overtime. Uh, I think this I've never been so excited to go to this part until I see this. Every time we read, it's different. Isn't it? And the answer is different. Uh, any, um, can I, uh, like, do you have any, uh, anything to add? Like, um, anything, feedback, feedback section? Sorry, I blab a bit too much. Yeah. Thank you for giving me a chance. Um, I'll make it better. I'll make it more refined, more structured. But um, I think this is the method I can do. I don't like to be rigid. Uh, this helps with a book as a guide, but able to talk properly, structurally. Yeah. I learned by doing. So thank you for giving me the chance to learn by doing. Uh, please give me feedbacks of anything I have said um, incorrectly or you don't agree with or questions that brought up by my uh, statements that needs to clarify with you, please bring it up in any form of media, peer writing, please bring it up to me without hesitation at all. You don't have to go through all that courtesy stuff, just straightforward. Um, I'm here only to learn from you and everyone. Uh, people who speak is a student, I always stand by this. People who listen is the judge, that never change. Master Chinko always doing like that to the very end, to the very um, senior level he is. I believe he thinks like that, never stops learning. So I, who am I not to do that? Um, so I hope that um, at this auspicious day of our dear uh, teacher, Shai Muni Buddha, original teacher who brought this to us, and all the sages, Confucius and all that, including the sages of the world, um, now we commemorate Shaya Muni Buddha, we commemorate his uh, teachings.
towards us for 49 years uh, in this world. Uh, it's short, of, short in terms of human history, but the impact is huge. Uh, it generates a lot of other Buddhas uh, for all these millennia. We talk about the time we have now, and it will keep generating even more Buddhas in future. I think that's, in our level, that's what we do. We also generate more people who can continue these teachings in action, in speech, in whatever capacity. Some people perform the task of acting, like Master Haixian and the promoter, Master Chinko. There's always stage for us to perform. Remember, this life is like a stage. I would like to wrap this up with this. It's a stage where we all have to perform as a son, as a father, as a husband, as a wife, as a daughter, as a subordinate, as the boss. And we perform right. Uh, we will go out of this stage knowing that we did our best and move on to the next. No cling, no regrets. So I, I hope everyone um, in this auspicious days of our dear Lord Shashayamani Buddha, um, we will all remember that uh, we all are Buddha. We are not bound by this existence forever. And we need to grab every single opportunity, just like what we learned from Mr. Yu, to do good, to perform according to our ability. Be flexible, yet stand by the principle. We will get where we are. We will. Uh, so let's dedicate this merit uh, in the form of 10 chanting, after the 10 chantings. Uh, Do special merits dedication and then dedication per the script. May the merits we have accrue from this uh, Dharma talk, uh, Dharma recordings and propagation of the Dharma, uh, of good teachings, uh, be dedicated to all beings who are suffering from the wars, from other disasters, from COVID, uh, who has passed away or who are still in uh, current uh, uh, predicaments and also dedicate to all their karma creditors uh, all the karma creditors and dedicate to all the person who uphold the good teachings good deeds good thoughts may their their light that shone upon humanity that were fates passed down in any form any society any culture and continues to bring our society to towards the goal of world peace um, may we all uh, practice what we preach, where we all um, earnestly uh, in our life, in our condition, do what we can to achieve what we have been taught. Uh, may we all grow our confidence in the teachings uh, of the sages and never stop our footsteps towards there. Um, and also, um, may they, this merit also adorn the Buddha's pure land repay the four kinds of kindness above and relieve the sufferings of those in the three paths below. May those who see and hear of this all bring forth the heart of understanding and compassion and leave the teaching for the rest of this life. Then be born together in the land of ultimate bliss. Namo Amitofu. Namo Benshu Sujamu. Namo Shayamuni Buddha. Namo Amitabha Buddha. Thank you very much for today. Um, see you guys next week. We'll continue with our youth group uh, on Mr. Yu who met the kitchen call. Yes, please. Lao Fa Si Di Xia Kai Si Si Wu Xing Fa Si Chuan Lai De. Oh, 
到今天佛诞节是今年本师释迦牟尼佛节，给我们带来光明、幸福。Follow his teaching, people will gain the fortune. And what they gain will be a full fortune, well-rounded. If you learn Buddhism without getting the ah uh, the, the fortune, that's because oh, I'll translate it. Is that what you mean? Translate it? Definitely, definitely. Yeah, thank you, thank you, thank you so much. Um, yeah, I should, I should have read this before. I will bring this. Yeah. Oh, just on, on speech? Okay, so today we have also learned, uh, uh, we have also received uh, from Master Ching Kong, our uh, abbot in the uh, all the pure and foundations um, through his student, Master Wu Xin, is also our vice abbot. So today is the auspicious day of um, Shayamuni Buddha, our original teacher in this world that brings the Buddhism. Today, this day should be the best and most um, blessed day for all beings. Why is it blessed? Because when Buddha comes to this world, there are conditions. What condition to bring in this world? To bring light to our life, all, for, so, all forms of life. All right. What kind of light we call it? This light, what's the effect of this light? It brings us happiness, real happiness. Because this light, we call light, it's a symbolism, came in the form of sutras. It's teaching, recorded teaching. Right? That's how it was passed down to us. And these teachings, this light brings us happiness. Um, how do we achieve that from the light that he's passed down to us? Follow his teaching, follow his thought, uh, speech, his deeds recorded in the Sutra. All right? People who follow, cultivate according to his teaching will always guaranteed to get fortune, cause and effect, guys. You will definitely get that. And that kind of fortune they get is not partial. It's well-rounded, thorough, fullness to the fullest. So the, the fortune do not have lackings at all. Here, yeah, everything. But there are cases, common one. If a person do not get fortune in the process of learning from Buddha or his teaching, through his teaching. That means something's wrong with the techniques, something's wrong with the concepts. So it's found foundational error. The conceptual error, the technique, the error in the in the in the way you practice, the error in the in the in, in where you came from, in the intentions. So there are two errors that will prevent you from reaping full benefits from Buddha's teaching. That's his point. He's leaving this for us to get full benefits, well-rounded fortune and merits. So two of them I'm going to repeat is in theory, that means conceptual wise, it's already wrong. We didn't get it right. Uh, and then in the methods of cultivation, theory and methods, something's wrong in these two, or two of them is wrong. So if your theory is right, your concept is right, your method is right, no errors, you, you will be able to see it because you already achieved the, you already reaped the benefits, which is full, well-rounded fortune. That, that's the truth. That's the truth. That, that's it, nothing more to it. Get the theory right, get the method right, you get to the real benefits of learning Buddhism. Hence, what do we do from knowing this level is we need to be focused, concentrate, uh, one-mindedness, one-heartedness. Uh, how, what do we concentrate on? Concentrate on generating the vow. I, I just mentioned about confidence. Generating the vow, confidence, the vow to bond in pure land. And with that level of uh, vow, devotion, to go there, then we're definitely going into the world of lotus, which is pure land. So this
has been um, paraphrased right, from Master Ching Kong's teaching. Some of them is context, just giving context, but uh, I'll give a raw one in the writing, like just purely from the words. Um, in so, and I'll summarize even more from that. Today is Sayumani Buddha's uh, celebration of his uh, birthday. Um, and this is our best time because he brings that light to us. That light consolidated in the form of sutra. And the way we get the best benefit from sutra is to listen to his teaching and act accordingly. And the reason many people who apparently listen in to the sutra, follow the sutra, do not get the benefit is because they did not um, they did not follow it correctly. Error in theory or in methods. If these two were sorted, got it right, you would definitely get there. In our case, this means we need to be concentrating all right, our mind, our heart, our effort, our intention into invoking the vow to born in pure land, right? And only then we definitely get uh, the guarantee to born into the land of lotus, which is the pure land. Namo Amitabha. This has been from Master Ching Kong's teachings. Thank you. Because he can't, he can't talk anymore in front of the live public voice, but people who get it next to him, write it down, pass it to Venerable Wuxin, and because Venerable Wuxin is distributors, right? He distributes. Yes. Thank you so much. This is a fresh teaching from Venerable Master Ching Kong, and it's consolidated in this, um, uh, it's crystallized in this form. It's precious, guys. We should take care of it, uh, listen to it, um, just remind ourselves, you know, wake, wake us up. Uh, thank you so much uh, until today. Uh, and also to the audience that uh, I might reach in, in, in front of uh, any platforms. I hope you all have a good uh, year ahead. Be auspicious through the pure speech, mind and thought. Uh, let's work together into the land of ultimate peace. Namo Amin. Bye-bye.